an electrifying dance or a quiet walk, may it be studying or even having a power nap. Our bodies are in constant need of energy. Every living body is constantly working internally. Our human body as well is extremely dynamic. And for this, where do we derive the necessary energy from? We've usually come across the saying that we obtain energy from the food we eat. But that is just partially correct. In fact, the food we eat is just a source of energy. The energy is derived mainly by the processes like the cellular respiration, which follows digestion. These two processes help in deriving the necessary energy that is stored in the food we eat. In simple words, the food we eat contains energy stored in the molecules in the form of bonds. These bonds are broken and the released energy is converted into usable form. Also, the food we eat helps in providing the molecules necessary to build up our body tissues and for their efficient functioning. So how do all these processes work? What happens to the food after we eat it? Where is it carried away? And where does it exactly get digested? How does the digestion process occur exactly? Let's find answers to all these questions in this and in the upcoming videos. To reach the answers, we have to travel the path of the complete digestive system. But that's a very long one. So for our convenience, we divide the system into different parts. The two major components of the digestive system that we will be studying include the long pipe called the alimentary canal and the digestive glands. Let's begin with the first one. The alimentary canal is a long muscular tube-like structure which starts from the mouth and ends at the anus. The diameter of this tube varies from one part to the other. And what do we mean by this? Can you tell me if the mouth, stomach and the intestines are continuous or they are different parts that are just placed one after the other? Well, the mouth, the esophagus, stomach, small intestine, large intestine and the anus are all in continuation. It's actually a single pipe that has varying diameter at different locations. And this difference in the diameter gives us these different organs. So we can say that the alimentary canal is a long muscular tube that has various parts like the mouth, esophagus, stomach, small and large intestines and the anus. The food is taken in by the mouth, swallowed and propelled further by the esophagus. The stomach takes up the charge of maximum breakdown of the food and both the intestines help in absorbing all the stuff that is necessary from the digested food. But the process is not as simple as it seems. There is a lot that gets into it. Let's have a look at each part and its participation in the process in detail. We shall commence with the mouth, which is also called as the buccal cavity. Now tell me one thing, why is the mouth included in the alimentary canal? Why is it considered as a part of the digestive system when its major purpose is simply talking? Well, let me tell you an interesting fact. Our mouth is involved directly in the process of digestion. Rather, it's the commencing point of the digestion process. Yes, the mouth majorly is responsible for ingestion, that is the food intake, followed by both mechanical and chemical digestion. Let's understand how. There are three major structures in our mouth that aid in digestion. They are the tongue, teeth and the salivary glands. All of these carry out efficient breakdown and mixing of the food. Among these, we will have a look at the salivary glands in detail when we have a look at the digestive glands. So we will learn about the teeth and the tongue first. Let's meet in the next video with details on these topics.